Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. Why do fish die within the first 48 hours after you get them? Did the fish that I recently received, did they, did they all survive? We'll take a look and see. Let's get into it right now. I have at least three reasons why fish die in the first 48. Let's go. Very few things are more frustrating than finally getting a hold of your dream fish and having it die on you in the first 24 to 48 hours. This has certainly happened to me, it's happened to most fish keepers. It can be a little puzzling, like why did he die? Everyone else in the tank was doing well, it seemed ready uh, to accept new fish, but he didn't make it. There are several reasons why this could be. First one, and the one that I think is, is, is often the case, but frequently not considered, was that the fish was fragile to begin with. So the trip to your home actually pushed it over the edge. So that fish already had something going on with it. The movement, the travel, fishing them out of the tank, which can be stressful, bag bagging them up, and the trip to your home floating and then putting them in an unfamiliar environment with unfamiliar tank mates, that can, that can aggravate something that was already there, bring it to the surface, and then you end up with a dead fish. Item number two, if you're adding several fish at once, there is a chance that you may have exceeded the beneficial bacteria requirements needed to support that many fish. And I've had people tell me that they added two dozen fish at once, or 10 or 12 fish at once, and the next morning they were struggling and the next day after that several of them had died and then the tank sort of catches up and so you remove the dead ones and everyone else seems to to be okay and again it's puzzling it's like wait a minute if it was a disease why didn't they all die well what happened was you had a momentary uh, sort of reboot of the tank the the ammonia exceeded what the beneficial bacteria could handle the more sturdy fish uh, handled it okay, they survived it, they weathered it, but the ones that were not as sturdy, they, they expired, they, they died on you. And then the beneficial bacteria sort of catches up. And uh, sometimes this will be accompanied by uh, an, al you know, an algae or a bacterial bloom, what looks like an algae bloom, bacterial bloom, that'll fog up the tank a little bit. And uh, that's, that's one warning sign, a flag, that you might want to get out your test kit. And then you'll see the fish uh, struggling a bit, and acting like uh, uh, they're having difficulty breathing uh, because they get a little bit of burn on the gills from the ammonia and now you're headed for some big problems. So exceeding the uh, beneficial bacteria capacity, the ability of the tank to turn ammonia and nitrite into the less harmless nitrate, uh, that would be another reason. A third reason, a third reason why your fish might be dying uh, after you get them. When you added fish, you actually exceeded the amount of available oxygen. If you don't have a lot of um, water surface tension breakup, you don't have a lot of water movement at the top of your aquarium, breaking it up and allowing the bad gas to get out and oxygen to get in, adding a new, a new group of fish, you might be, especially if you, have, if you run a warm tank, like some of the tanks in here, 82 degrees, 81, 82, 82.5, if you run warm tanks, oxygen has uh, difficulty uh, dissolving and getting becoming available to the fish. So you have to really break up that surface tension. And you can do that with uh, wave makers, power heads, uh, hang on back filters that cascade into the water, they do it, sponge filters, air stones, anything like that. So if you add new fish and you see some of the fish, especially the bigger fish, going to the surface, and, and, and gasping, moving their mouths a little bit. You may have uh, crossed a line into a oxygen depletion. And again, just like the beneficial bacteria, it'll level itself out. You'll lose a couple of fish, and then the available oxygen will be enough for the remaining fish, and everything else will normalize, and you'll go, what was that? What, what, what happened? Ideally, none of your fish should be working their mouths. None of them should be uh, 
like show labored breathing and hanging out near the surface of the tank, that is a warning sign that that, that, that went on. Let's take a look. Did my fish make it on this, last, uh, on this last trip? Let's take a look. As you can see, the, uh, the Oscars, that red tiger Oscar and that, uh, that lemon albino Oscar are doing great. And so are the uh, red spotted Severums. Even though it does look like the albino Oscar has taken an interest in them. And so I may have to uh, take those red Severums and put them somewhere else. They're, they look great and they're eating well and they're interacting well. They have all the signs of a perfectly healthy fish. So I might just pull them out of quarantine and throw them into the uh, 210 gallon and let them, uh, let them live with bigger, more aggressive fish. They might be a little bit too much for the red spotted Severums. The other fish, the African cichlids you can see here are doing very, very well. Uh, they're looking great, right? We've got a Christogaster. We have a uh, Mucochromis uh, yellow in there, Lodicea yellow. There's also a, uh, there's also an eye biter in there and a beautiful uh, blue Fusco that is doing very, very well. So those, those fish are, are, are doing great. There's a Coingi in there as well, a good sized Coingi. I'm anxious to get those fish into the 300 gallon where I think they're gonna do great with their tank mates and all that extra room. That's it on reasons why fish uh, uh, might die after you bring them home. One, one additional tip that, that certainly is gonna be uh, uh, very, very uh, real to those of you who have cichlids is that the fish encountered aggression. You add the fish to the tank, and the next morning that fish is acting very cowed. They're in the corner, they're hiding, they're not eating well, their fins are clamped, uh, they're acting very, very shy, they're not coming to the glass when they think it's time to eat, they're hanging back, and you might have a, a, a fish that is bullying that new fish. The stress level in that fish is gonna go up, and they could potentially become sick, or get killed off altogether, and that's that very frustrating situation where you go to bed, all the fish look great. Next morning you come downstairs and there's a dead cichlid upside down in the bottom of the tank. That's aggression, very hard to predict sometimes. And when you buy cichlids, in particular African cichlids, right? You roll the dice, you put them in, and you watch them for as long as you can. But sometimes that aggression occurs when the lights are out and there's really uh, nothing you can do about it except take the old guy out and, uh, and maybe try again later with a different fish. So if you have tips and ideas about why fish don't make it in the first 24 to 48 hours, please include them in the comments below. We all learn from each other around here. We can talk more about this on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, ben.o.cichlid, come on by, good stuff there. Stuff I don't post anywhere else. We have a great Facebook group too. A uh, very friendly group, no trolls allowed, and no advertising. It's, uh, uh, it's really just there to help fish keepers of all levels, all types, fresh, nano tanks, cichlids, salt water, doesn't matter, come on by, all right? Thank you, my friends, and if you like the content, be sure to give it a thumbs, thumbs up, uh, hit that sub button and uh, the bell, and let's keep growing the channel. With your help, we're gonna get over 50,000 real soon, all right? That's it for me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.